Hi friends, Craig with the Barefoot Forge and today we're going to talk about how to store metal and we're going to build an awesome new metal storage rack here in our new facility. We just got this awesome new shop and when we moved we kind of just threw everything in a pile. We don't want everything in a pile anymore. Let's build a rack. Let's measure this out. So from that brick right there all the way over to here gives us 11 feet. So we don't even need we got plenty of space, even if we bought 10 footers. And we wanna just keep to this height here. This gives us a maximum of three foot. Three foot would be good. That brings us to right there. I also don't want it to stick out too far and take up too much space. So let's just make it stick out probably about two feet. Let's come up with a plan. Today we're gonna to be playing with the Lincoln Electric 140 MP. It's a multi-process machine that runs on 110 volt and it's my favorite teaching tool in this entire shop. We're also gonna be using this awesome weld cart. You can see on my YouTube channel as a different video, uh, the Barefoot Forge. We built this out of a CertiFlat welding table from weldtables.com. It's just a 24 by 24 fab square with the leg kit and we added a shelf for tanks and some shelving. We've also got the fab wing on here. That's gonna give us a little extra space so we can, uh, we can fabricate up our steel storage racks. Anyway, let's get started. Here's my who's it. I made a, uh, made a model entirely out of wood. I'm not much of a woodworker, so this took about 14 hours and lots of super glue, but basically we'll change this spacing around a little bit, maybe add a support in there and toss a couple of those little doodaddies off there. This took way too long. This was a waste of time. I would not recommend you do this. Just, just get into it. Worst case scenario, you ruin everything. Here we go. We got this all fixtured out on our weld table. We got some armor tools clamps holding it down. We got a uh, weld square from Sort of Flat here. We got some of these Milwaukee grippity grip things. Gonna use our Lincoln Viking uh, helmet. This is the good one. This is the 3350. I really like this thing. Big old viewing area, lots of clarity. Got a couple of gloves and uh, got myself a hammer and about 14 pairs of uh, blue handled Harbor Freight needle nose pliers to cut off all the wire. Well, I forgot to uh, switch this sucker back from TIG welding mode, so I gotta untig welder it and re MIG welder it. I guess I could TIG this, but. That's just not the plan. Let's take this whole thing apart, redo stuff. Most important thing is making sure you don't go boy oy oing with this big old string here. That's an unhappy day. Give this a little trim job with your blue handles. Give it a little spool. We're using some 030 wire today. I use 030 wire for pretty much everything. Um, I'm yet to really find a thing in a general shop setting that can't be done with 030 wire. And we're at about eighth inch thick wall, so we'll use settings H and eight. I don't know what that means. It's completely arbitrary, but we'll go with H and eight. Oh, let's see here. And we gotta also take this thingy off. We don't need that anymore. Let's just attach to the TIG portions. That's a foot pedal. That'll get real weird with the MIG welder, but I imagine you could leave it in and then just have a foot pedal to activate your MIG welder. Gotta tighten this little doodad up in here. Give it a few of those, the spins. Then you gotta just remember to take this one out, put this one in there, do that other thing with this one again. That's super technical. We gotta switch our gases out because, uh, you know, the MIG and the TIG, they like the different gases. So we're going from pure argon here over to the MIG mix of 75% argon, 25% CO2. That little bit of CO2, it just adds flavor. I really like this welding cart setup because it fits two 80 cubic foot tanks on the back, which is great for general hobby use. And uh, I've got them secured with a ratchet strap. I don't trust chains. I want it to be tight. Okay, so we got that on there. Now this is a pretty cool thing. I'm a big fan of these. I get these from valveview.com. They're pretty cool. Basically this prevents me from running out of gas because when I turn it on, it goes all shiny red. When I shut it off, bam, goes all yellow. So I can look at this at the end of the day and say, hey, I left my gas on. That's paid for itself about four times. Let's give this a little tack in the corner and then bust this square out so we don't weld to the square. I don't think those settings are quite what I want them to be. Yeah, I don't, I don't hate that, but 
I just don't feel like those settings are quite right. Let's give it a little bit more wire speed, just a hint. Okay, so I made my first square thing. It's probably a bit warm. And uh, yeah, it's not great, but I bet it's gonna do. I didn't weld the bottom because I don't wanna grind on it at all. I'm pretty lazy. And that way she sits nice and flat. I didn't like those initial settings. I went with like more like H and eight and a half. It seemed to be a little more, more powerful. Okay, I went ahead and changed the plan a little bit because uh, even though I spent all of the time making the wooden thing and the diagram, I, uh, I messed up my steel order and I don't have enough steel to put four of these supports in. I only have enough to do three. That's probably enough because honestly, I don't really get pieces over eight feet. If I've got six feet of support, that's only one foot dangling. It can dangle one foot on either side. So I think this should be pretty good. We're gonna do 24 inches between these two and 48 inches between these two. Words are hard. Okay, so now that we got that all figured out and that I'm doing different things because I sucked at the planning, we're gonna figure out the angles. We gotta figure out the angle of the dangle up there and the angle of the dangle down there. So instead of using the skills that I developed in math class in elementary school and promptly forgot, I used a website called calculator.net and it did all the things for me. I put in the length of the thing and the other thing, and it tells me that one angle needs to be 55 degrees and the other one needs to be 34 degrees. The entire length of the thingamajigger needs to be 43.83 inches. Look at that. You didn't need to go to school. You just needed to use the internet. Okay, so we need a 55 and a 35 degree angle. Guess what? Those two are the antithesis of each other. So you just set the thing to basically 35 degrees, you cut your one dude, you measure from that to the end of the other one and you flip it over, 180 degrees, stick it back in there, chop saw away. You got yourself all your angles. Let's do this. I'm pretty limited in this saw. It'll only go to 45 degrees. So I pulled this bolt out, which is pretty important and stops it at 45 degrees. That way I could go past it to an arbitrary amount that seems to be about 55 degrees. If it's not exactly right, we'll just fill it up with weld. So it'll be fine as long as we get our length right. And we're measuring from our longest end to our longest end and 43.8. Gonna use my handy Sharpie. Make sure you buy these by the pallet and then evenly distribute them throughout your room because otherwise you'll lose the entire box. Uh, because this device is mighty loud, I'm gonna put on my Isotunes hearing protection. I'm a big fan of these. They keep my ear balls working proper. Okay, so it's worth noting that my angle's all, like this didn't cut at a 90, so that's gonna be a problem and we'll have to do some filling in with that. Okay, so this here is braid grinder with a 60 grit combat abrasive belt. This will make quick work of deburr and things. That should do. Got a nice clean edge. Let's see what we can do with it now. Okay, so the age old question is, does it actually fit? And if we did our math right, and I'm certain we didn't, so it definitely doesn't. It 100% doesn't fit. And uh, well, the angle's probably still real close. Just gotta cut off at least the width of the tube, at least a one inch. Okay, I just recut this bad boy to 42 and a quarter. I don't know if that's right either, but I did that based on uh, just guessing. And well, it's a lot righter. Gotta knock another half inch off and we'll be real nice. And then I'll just copy this one on the other ones. Don't do math. Well, I've got it more or less figured out. So we're just gonna chop these 55 degree angles on both of these other tubes. And then we'll figure out our length. All we gotta do now is lay out these other two based on the one that we do like. So let's flip her around so we get our 55s all on the same end. Take our Sharpie and give it one of those. And let's give it one of those. 33 and 35 and 55. That's our game today. Oh, here's a fun tip. If your wire gets too long and you can't find all your blue handles because you lost them everywhere, just make it longer. Oh no, we got roller issues, you see that? She ain't coming out pretty. Ooh, let's figure it out. That's why I wasn't in my groove. You can't weld if you're not in your groove. Okay, I got her all fixed up proper, wires back in the groove. Let's cut off all this with our blue handles, but let's pretend we couldn't find them anywhere. Well, we just give it a little extra and bend it back real aggressively. Give it one of those. Now, wherever that weld starts at that 90 degree junction, it's gonna break right off when we need it to. Put... 
That'll do just fine. That's a triangle right there, if I've ever seen one. Sack the other sides just so nothing moves, and then we'll seam it up. Oh yeah, those settings are spot on. Way happier now that I got that wire feeding proper. Good sizzle. Flip it and stick it. Stick one of our armor cl clamps down on here, just so she stands up on her own. Oh yeah. Woo, good penetration. So in a few spots I was blowing through, and the reason being I had my angles wrong. Um, when I V out the piece that was cut on the chop saw, it's really thin there. So I need to just make sure I'm directing my heat more towards that virgin piece that hasn't been V'd out. And then it just drops right into place and you get a delightful puddle. This is looking good. We got all three of these made. And uh, they look pretty good, probably warm up there. I don't think I'm gonna grind on them at all. I actually want to be able to stand behind my welds as not needing to be ground upon, at least good enough. Well, one thing's noticeable, that wall's not straight. Either that wall's not straight or this floor's not straight. So we're gonna make this a freestanding thing and then we'll just shim it out and tap Connor into the wall a couple of times. Maybe not even do that, who knows? If it stands up on its own pretty well, we won't have to. Okay, let's just keep making things bigger. Definitely wasn't big enough. Okay, well, I spent an enormous amount of time getting things square and then making sure they weren't and then trying to get them square again. And the moral of the story is own more clamps and squares. Just own like a lot of them. You don't have enough, get some more. And then uh, when your level's not perfectly level, it's probably an issue with either gravity or the level. I'm just making these assumptions. This is fine. Yeah, I've been at this for like three government holidays. Let's get back at it. Let's do a little welding. Let's see what that did. How much movement did we end up with? Get her back to 26 and a, and a eighth, 16th. I kind of wish I had a support here, so it didn't do that at all. I don't think that's that important, but I think I could put one up here and it really wouldn't affect anything negatively, and I think it would keep all this nice and square. So we'll toss another sucker in right there and one over there. I think that'll make me a real happy person. Okay, I had to get a little clever with a ratchet strap to pull a couple of things in, but you know, other than potentially ruining it by catching it on fire, it'll probably be fine. This front support added a lot of strength from, uh, you know, bending sideways. I could feel it as I put this strap on. It's pretty solid now. Rock solid now. Mm-hmm. Let's add another one over here. Okay, friends, let's weld this last brace in. Okay, the next thing we need to figure out is how long do we want these little shelf units to be? How many of them do we want there to be? And do they go at an angle so everything rolls down to itself and puts itself in a giant pile? Or do they go flat so you can weigh things out accordingly? I did a little research on the old interwebs there and saw that most of the people that have racks, uh, they all come out horizontally. They don't go up at an angle like this. I see massive advantages to that, but we'll go like this and throw a little tabity tab on the end there at the end. Let's do it. Yeah, I kind of hate that. I mean, my angle's definitely off, but I got plenty of space for a weld. I don't know, maybe I'll just send it. Let's put some more welds in. Let's take our foot long, stick our level on it, get her lined up, do a little dreaming with it. Looks good, it's level, square-ish. Let's tack it. Okay, first thing we gotta do, mark our steps. I'm really, you know, the day's been long and the standards have gone down. And I think that's usually okay. I think this is gonna be a functional stand and uh, 
I think it's gonna get finished. And those are the two most important things at this point. I'm just sticking this bad boy on there, giving her some eyeball adjustments, and giving it the zappity zaps. Let's see what we can do. So that first weld just sort of establishes that I don't need to hold it anymore. And then I can bend it a little bit, getting my level right. And then I can take a step back and see that my side to side is correct. It's not, it needs to come this way some. I do think it's better. Zip zap, electricity! Yay! Let's get number three on there. Same thing, we got our level. Let's check our side to side. Give it another tack. Electricity activate. Send it. strong enough guys this was fun to make it's not perfect turns out the wall's not perfect and the floor is not perfect so it's off by two and a half inches back here and it wobbles a little bit but I'm confident that it's straight anyway I'm gonna put some metal on here it's gonna work great at some point I'm gonna add these little things is this design perfect no is it executed perfectly no but I learned a lot along the way and I had a lot of fun I'm thankful I could share it with you anyway I'm Craig from the barefoot forge you can find me on YouTube, Instagram, all those places. You know, I like making stuff. I got a sign in the shop that says get inspired to make things. And hopefully this project got you inspired to make things. Even if it's a mistake. Make mistakes. Failure is absolutely an option.